As the years go by, with musical subgenres growing blurrier and music made famous by TikToks and memes dominating the charts, we're sort of in the wild west at this point. Anything goes, but at the same time, everything is also put under a microscope by marketing teams at billion dollar labels. So at least from my perspective, this overstimulation of content has brought me to a point where a guy named Lil Dicky making a song with Chris Brown about them switching bodies and now the white guy can say the n-word and the abuser doesn't get judged on his controversial past and that song is a smash hit unironically very little surprises me anymore. But what about before this kind of thing became normal? What tracks were seeing a ton of play on the radio, even though their own fame didn't really make sense? Whether due to their song structure, production, lyrics, style, and so on, today I'm gonna ramble on about some of the weirdest hit songs ever made. Quick note that I'm trying to avoid the concept of novelty songs, so stuff like What Does the Fox Say, Barbie Girl by Aqua, etc. Anything that blatantly gimmicky is for another video, but some of these will come close. Anyways, big thank you to Scentbird for sponsoring today's video. Scentbird is this awesome fragrance subscription service that allows you to try high quality scents for just $17 a month. With their unique experience, you can discover or build upon your fragrance style with over 600 brands, including designer and indie labels. As a guy that's never really worn fragrances besides, well, deodorant, the fact that Scentbird has allowed me to actually smell good instead of just normal is pretty Pretty cool. I've been using the John Varvatos XX Artisan Teal, which has this adventurous aquatic quality to it, and that's been a nice transition after a day at the beach. Well Played by Confessions of a Rebel gives this feeling of a subtle confidence with its warm, vibrant notes. Hermetica's Vertical Loud hits you in this enchanting, sophisticated way. And finally, Mason 21G's Sage Supreme has this X factor about it that makes me want to have it on me at all times. Make sure to click Click the link below and use my code ALFO for 55% off your first month at Scentbird. That's only about $8 for your first month. And I also have exciting news, Scentbird is now available in Canada. The most obvious example of a weird hit, Bohemian Rhapsody by Queen, is a perfect introduction to this list. In terms of what typically makes popular music popular, this is super unconventional, especially for a song that's certified a diamond. There is no real hook or chorus on this thing, which that criteria alone could typically qualify a song to make this list, but there's so much more. While the 70s were strange, the concept of a prog rock opera being this huge is bizarre. It's about six minutes long, which is double or almost triple the length of modern pop songs, and this method of basically combining all these songs together into one fever dream of a track is rare. Bismillah. No, we will not let you go. Let him go. Staying on the topic of 70s prog rock, Hocus Pocus by Focus feels very sincere to me, and it's also batch crazy. Peaking at number 9 on the Billboard Hot 100, this track uses a form of classical music called Rondo, which to put it simply is when there's a main theme throughout, with one or more quote-unquote episodes that introduce new ideas and contrast the principal theme in interesting ways. Within Hocus Pocus, the principal theme is this compelling hard rock riff, and the episodes include frontman Theis von Lear either yodeling, playing the accordion, scatting, whistling, doing flute riffs, and even eefing, which has been described as hillbilly beatboxing. <laughs> But what about an example that's less extreme? Music with little to no efing in it. 2009 was dominated by confident superstars putting out high energy bangers. Within the top 10 Billboard singles of that year, we've got Boom Boom Pow and I Got a Feeling by The Black Eyed Peas, Poker Face and Just Dance by Lady Gaga, and Single Ladies by Beyonce. There were only a few other tracks from 2009 that went number one, and they follow a similar trend. Kelly Clarkson belting my life would suck without you, Flo Rida turning up with Right Round, Jay-Z and Alicia Keys with the anthemic Empire State of Mind. But then if you look at November, you see this. 
Fireflies by Owl City. This one has a bit more to do with context than the others, like this guy just seems so extremely out of place compared to who I just mentioned, but still, this song going number one anytime would feel awkward, in my opinion. The curious, pensive verses playing over this twee synth pop, talking about getting hugs from 10,000 lightning bugs, and the fireflies thinking he's weird because he hates goodbyes, it's basically Band Kid fan fiction becoming the biggest song in the country. Getting the huge sing-along chorus makes it more believable as a hit, but still, this musical representation of small bean energy being as popular as stuff like this, I'll never forget that. I'd like to make myself believe. Also, for the record, that Boom Boom Pow, I Got a Feeling era of the Black Eyed Peas does sound niche and time capsule-y if you go back and listen to it now. It's this hyper-enthusiastic mess that feels dystopian in a very Black Mirror way, but because they were a part of an entire wave doing this new internet age, everything is a party and we're saying La Chaim as an ad-lib style, it was normal at the time, I guess. I do need to mention that I'm more focused on songs being a hit in the US because let me just give you a quick rundown of some songs that went number one in the UK. Axel F by Crazy Frog, Eh Oh by the Teletubbies, Can We Fix It by Bob the Builder, Mambo Number no. 5 by Bob the Builder, Whatever Mr. Blobby Is, and Chocolate Salty Balls from South Park. Like I said before, this category of weird hits is for another video. Jump up and down and move it all around. Mix it up. You want to know a genre that's barely seen any success on the Billboard Hot 100? Reggae. But what if you had a band from Canada make this sterile, inauthentic reggae fusion with one of the whiniest choruses of the 21st century? Why you gotta be so for all of the embarrassingly bad pop songs that were going around in 2014, Rude is one of the more confusing options. Between the boring style of dipping their toes into reggae without including any real heart, lyrics that play on a classic trope but end up not really making any sense, I don't think rude is the adjective that they were looking for here, and an overall lack of charisma with the vocals, the mixing, the guitar solo, it is so nothing and yet massive commercial success. The 1980s saw more than a few big hits that many could see as novelty, but I think it was just a goofy enough time that listeners were down for anything. It was a decade of utilizing a catchy melody and then cosplaying as something entirely unique once you had everybody on your side singing along. Thomas Dolby's She Blinded Me With Science was a new wave synth pop experiment. We've got a theatrical delivery the constant ad-libs of science. There's a shaker that doubles as the singer sniffing, we've got uncomfortable yelping, and so much more. She blinded me with science. Similarly, Down Under by Men at Work is so playful and silly that it borders on being a joke, but it's a number one hit that's legitimately critically acclaimed. It's this intoxicating stereotype story of Australia filled with cheesy studio effects that just work. The inclusion of the flute on the melody was genius, it's self-deprecating in a charming, funny way, and I can never get enough of this song. The way that it explodes at the end absolutely rips. There's Whip It by Devo, unusual tempo, wacky lyrics, but a certified classic of the decade with a legacy to match. There's Bobby McFerrin's Don't Worry Be Happy, an entire song made by one person's voice, no instruments in the studio, and it went number one, sweeping the Grammys in the process. Don't worry, be happy now. Ooh. Rock Me Amadeus by Falco was an Austrian dude rapping about Mozart being some kind of badass punk icon. 
number one on the charts. And I could go on and on with examples from over the years. Almost since the dawn of the Billboard charts, there have been unconventional hits like Dominique by the Singing Nun. This was a Belgian-French Christian folk song that is equal parts sweet and kinda creepy. There's Disco Duck, and I suggest you watch the Todd in the Shadows video on that one. Bat Dance by Prince is this collage of beats and then audio clips from the movie. Hotel California is pretty long for a number one. It's hard to believe that Butterfly by Crazy Town, a new metal song, was the biggest thing in the country for a couple weeks. But here's the thing. A weird hit song isn't always just trivia or a story down some eccentric rabbit hole or a perfect storm of timing that sends people like this to short-lived superstardom. A weird hit song can be meaningful and influential, an example of mainstream audiences latching onto a track that's innovative and complex, music that sends the industry and pop culture into a different direction. When you go through the 2010s specifically, you'll see a few songs that had the country by a chokehold, they went number one, but they also seemed to crack away at the music industry at large, eventually creating the world that we're living in now where indie music and the mainstream occupy the same spaces and sounds, where you scroll down a Spotify trending tab and there's high art from kids making stuff in their bedrooms alongside legends and memes and whatever else. Somebody that I used to know by Gautier was a melancholic indie art pop duet with a slow build whose chorus comes barreling in at a minute and 30 seconds. That's something that set the stage for today. Royals by Lord was slow, minimalist, dark, and extremely referential compared to much of the party anthems of the time. A sound that different, beating its competitors, shows a clear X factor. But even as recently as 2019, living in this wild west where anything can happen, a weird hit song like Bad Guy by Billie Eilish can still feel special. There's the circus-like synth riff, the complete switcheroo at the end of the track, the drops after duh, etc. So even though it's fun to gawk at the random times when mainstream audiences decided to play along with music that is odd, it's also worth acknowledging the groundbreaking artists that can make odd music feel normal. Thank you for watching that video. If you want to support the channel, feel free to like, comment, and subscribe. You can follow me on social media at RenshawHS. You can buy my merch, support my Patreon, and thank you again. I'll see you soon.